Hi everyone, it's Jen Mallon. Welcome to Come Home. I'm so happy to see all of you today. I pray you have your coffee or your other go-to beverage so that we're all armed and dangerous and fully caffeinated because we are gonna have a great show today. You picked a good day. Of course, every day is a good day to watch Come Home, but today's a really special day to tune in. In a minute, I'm going to introduce you to a very special anointed woman, and I can't wait for you to meet her. Her name is Lady Faith Apiafi Hailsham. And for the few of you out there who don't know her yet, um, or don't know her work already, let me just say that you are in for a treat. I mean, look at this beautiful, bright cover. Uh, listen, this lady proclaims Isaiah 60 as her own personal scripture, as many of you do, right? But seriously, arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. Um, have you not um, proclaimed this word over your life and the lives of your loved ones? Well, Lady Faith really lives this scripture and I'm gonna let her share her story in just a minute. But I wanna mention that she's written a book called Unveiling Faith, A Spiritual Journey of Transformation. And you can go and get it on her website uh, or on Amazon or a whole host of places. Um, but I want you to get this book because if after today, uh, you're not intrigued, listen, you, you will be and you'll wanna buy it for others. So she also has authored a spoken word album called Speak the Word. And I want to hear more about that too, just like you. Um, and uh, she prays the word, she prays scriptures, she does declarations and it's powerful. So we'll be giving you all of her contact information as we dig into this precious time that we'll be together in the living room. So once again, it's gonna be fascinating. Um, if you're facing some big challenges, you are going to hear how she came out of a cocoon and she was reborn as a beautiful butterfly during COVID. God just completely rebranded her, reinvented her, and she wrote about it. So stick around. You will be encouraged and you will be blessed today. And so abundant life belongs to you according to John 10, 10. And I love highlighting people that are really living and walking abundant living and they like to share it with others. And so we are going to go to a wonderful life hack uh, with Moms on Call. And then we're going to go straight to the living room and you get to meet my new friend, Lady Faith. Api Afi, Hail Sham. Oh yes. One of the biggest issues for parents of multiples is that they do not want the louder baby to wake the quiet one no. and then have two screaming babies. Yes. One screaming baby is hard to deal with, but two screaming babies is like, no. it's the end of the world. Kids are wonderful and unique and we have great news. They are going to learn to accommodate each other and they can learn to do it. So the loud one stays in the same room with the quiet one and if the quiet one wakes, they will both learn to get themselves back to sleep. They will be perfectly fine. We often find that one baby can be screaming at a tone that makes us wonder if the neighbors can hear <laughs> and the other twin is sleeping like nothing is happening. Twins will learn right away if a noise is a get out of crib free card and they will settle right into the routine if you stay out of the way. Now this also works just with multiple children. If you need to have two kids in the same room or rooms that are next to each other, to keep them both sleeping in the rooms that they are intended to sleep in and sleeping all night, we just let nature take its course. And if the quiet one wakes, they will get themselves back to sleep and that skill will work to their advantage for the rest of their lives. They learn to accommodate so much better than we give them credit for. My twins loved sleeping directly next to one another. No matter where I put them in the crib, by morning they were head to head. It was amazing how even in those close quarters, one could cry so loud that I was afraid they would wake the neighbors and the other would sleep as if nothing was happening. <laughs> On occasion, when Patrick would awaken Blake, then Blake would cry for a few minutes, get himself right back to sleep. Remember, as you finish this great resource that we have been there, personally and emotionally present for the entire process. Welcome back. 
I, I don't know about you, but I love how to's and that's one of the reasons that the life hacks segment are so cool because we learn all kinds of things. My grandmother taught me to be a lifelong learner. So I love just learning about a plethora of things. Well, before we jump into this next uh, precious time in our living room, I just want to say this is my first show where uh, the guests came in just loaded down with gifts, flowers and books and cards and notes and a seed and prophetic words for each of the team. And I just want um, to say how honored and blessed, how precious your heart is, Faith. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank and, you for having me. Uh, and for bringing all the gifts. You're, you are just this bundle of love and oh, sunshine. Thank and you. And I can't wait to talk, but I would like to show a clip so that you can get to know her a little bit better before we dive into this interview. My story started back in Nigeria, West Africa, where I grew up as a child, this firstborn of seven children in a Christian family. My parents decided to call me Faith because they had to pray and believe God to have me. Due to the hardships we faced as a family in Nigeria, we had to learn to pray for everything. At the young age of 10, my mother would say to me, Faith, if you don't pray, there will be no food on the table. If you don't pray, there will be no money to pay your school fees. And so at that age, I learned to pray for everything. And I saw the power of prayer at work. My first big step of faith came when I faced a huge mountain that stood in the way of my dream of going to London to work and to study. My passion for prayer has shaped who I am today and gave birth to my first spoken word album, Speak the Word, available on all major media platforms. My message to you is to go on an adventure with God to discover your God-given purpose and assignment and to be true to that calling. Be original and authentic. My new book, Unveiling Faith, which tells the story of my journey of faith across three continents, is now available on Amazon. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And my handle is at Lady Faith Hilsham. My website is faithhilsham.com. Isn't she just the epitome of beauty and grace uh, you are going to love her. So, Lady Faith, thank you again yes. for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your faithfulness to God and for pinning it. I mean, you are a two-time author <laughs> and uh, you are pretty new to being in America, right? Yes. Two years, you came during the pandemic. Yes, I did, yes. And you've done so much already. God's just opened wonderful doors for you and yes. it's just an honor Amen. to hang out with you. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about your upbringing because um, first of all, you know, you referenced your mom. We have to pray. I know she was the one who modeled prayer. Yes. In your book, you talk about that the foundation of your life was morning devotions yes. with your parents and your yes. siblings. All yes. of your siblings have biblical names. I yes. love that. And then the other thing I thought was so special, and you address this in your book, and we talked about it, is that your dad always said to use both names to hyphenate, and you have honored yeah. him in that. I have, yes. And uh, and he had his reason, and you didn't need an explanation. You just chose no. to honor your father, which is a beautiful thing in this day and age. Thank you. Okay, so start yeah. out with little faith and just how you started learning impressions about God. Sure. So I grew up in a Christian family back in Nigeria. And in fact, I remember at the age of about five, you know, and we had a morning devotion and we had, we had a big household. So there's about 15 of us. There's my mom, then my dad. And I remember very clearly 
my mom teaching this scripture and it was in James chapter one, you know, and it started and I just and I remember just, you know, taking on that scripture, you know, and it's the one that says, and whosoever looks into the law of liberty and continues therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Yeah. He will be blessed in his deeds. And she taught me that as a five year old and she made us like speak it over and over. And I just never forgot that, you know, as my mom and my dad as well, as they taught us in devotions, they were so serious about it. And they made sure that we understood what was being taught. And we got to a stage where we began to lead those devotions <laughs> ourselves, you know, and so you couldn't just sit back and just be passive. You would be asked questions. You'd be asked to pray or you'd be asked to sing. So that was really the upbringing, you know, that I came up in. And it was really a place where you could just learn so much more about God. And my parents, they model that as well. Yeah. So my parents were givers. You know, I think I talk about that in my book. They're givers and they gave to, to the work of the Lord. So really, even the, the household we lived in and the compound was an extension of the ministry at the time the church we went to. My dad took in like people who were either didn't have homes to go to or at the time people gave their life to Christ and they were being persecuted. Yeah. So some of them were actually driven out of their homes and my dad took in some of these people. So I saw my parents live in that and my mom, she always cared about people and she would, you know, want us to take food you know, to all those who didn't have that food as well. So this is really the upbringing that I came in. And I have to say that there was so much love yeah. as well. Like my parents loved us so much as children. And I think that was really where that heart of love came for me yeah. because I learned to love my younger ones, you know. And so I talk about growing up and how when hardship came in, I had to help my parents take care of my younger ones. But for me, it wasn't a burden. I loved it because I loved I loved my pet, I loved my family, I loved my siblings. I wanted the best for them. Yeah. So it was really, I would say, the heart of my parents that the Lord used to also speak and to minister to me. And all of that has really shaped who I am today. Wow. How fortunate and blessed you are to have that story. Yes, um, I, I feel very blessed and fortunate. And you lived, I mean, you lived in a, a culture that for the most part didn't embrace Christianity. In fact, y you could be persecuted for yes. your faith and killed for your faith. Exactly, yes. At the time, my parents were like first generation Christians and they were people who they were giving their lives to Christ. And yes, they were facing persecutions at home. So really they had to be quite radical yeah. about their faith. My dad was quite radical when he got saved. My mom was quite radical as well. So really it was a radical faith that got them on that journey that they were on, that they forsook everything else, you know, to follow the Lord and to do everything to advance the kingdom of God, you know, in their time. And for me, that was the real role model, which is today how I live my life to say, Lord, my life is for you to yeah. serve you because that was exactly how they had to live. You know, in Nigeria at the time, you know, people had to depend on God because there was nothing else. You know, I talk about like, even in my book, food on the table. There were times we didn't have food because we faced hardship and we had to learn how to pray for absolutely everything. Yeah. So that was the foundation. You know, I often say, Lady Faith, I believe that God is bringing missionaries to America um, that have had to live the real Jesus walk mm. um, because I believe we are facing days uh, in the future that we are going to have to be mentored and taught. Yes. And you know, one thing you said, sometimes people think, oh, it will just take, you know, decades and decades and generation after generation. Your parents are first generation Christians and look at you, barely Amen. 40, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yet you are an executive, you are a businesswoman, you are a speaker, you are a poet, you are an author, and you have lived the walk. You have had to believe God for impossible things. Yes. So you are just this beacon of hope that says, just serve Jesus. It doesn't take that long for the miracle working power to shift. 
yes. generations and that blessing to come on our children and our children's children. Yes, no, absolutely. I, absolutely. I really learned to really commit my life to the Lord. I think from that young age, because I saw my parents so genuine, I followed that. You know, in fact, I left home at the age of 11 to go to boarding school. Wow. And that was actually where I committed my life to the Lord because I knew that I couldn't just depend on my parents' faith. I had to make that decision myself, which I did. And I'm so glad, you know, thank God I did that because then by 18, you know, I had left Nigeria. And so really, I, I have seen that when you serve the Lord, he really honors you because I have, I have literally given the Lord my life and I've said, Lord, take it as yours, you know, and I have really seen him come through for me. And that's really what I want to encourage, you know, like people that you don't have to have shortcuts. Yeah. You don't have to sell yourself short because God is faithful. Yes. When you serve him and when you give your life to him, he will honor it and he will make beautiful of your life so that your life can give him glory. Yeah. Okay. So I would love for you, if you feel comfortable sharing about your 40th birthday party. Sure. And also I feel there's people, faith, and I know you share this publicly when you speak, there's so many that will be encouraged about your story of purity and the stand mm -hmm. you've taken. So dive into that a little bit. Sure. So I turned 40. So this is at the um, beginning of 2020. Yeah. And, you know, at that point I had been praying, you know, for marriage, like since from when I was like 19, 20. So now we're coming to like 20 years and, you know, it hadn't happened. And it wasn't really like, you know, there was a time when I had left the faith and then came back. But really from that age of 19, I'd committed my life to him. I said, Lord, you know, I give you my life. I give you, I want to live in purity. And so I really took that stand of abstinence, you know, and I said, Lord, I'm going to have my first kiss on the altar. That's how I just went completely radical, you know, because I was just so passionate for the Lord. Yeah. And so now getting to 40 and I had seen so many people around me receive that gift of marriage, you know, so I had had prayer partners along the way. Most of them had been married. So really I got to this point where I was like, Lord, I'm turning 40, you know, and this hasn't come. And at first, you know, there was this feeling of just discouragement, despondent. I mean, I was feeling despondent, you know, but really the Lord did a shift in my mind, you know, because it was like the Lord really showed me in my life that, you know, he has been faithful all this time. He's brought me through so much more, you know, and actually, most importantly, he knows what is best for my life. His timing is in his hands. And so I learned to submit my life into his hands and the timing. And so really my 40th birthday beca became a Thanksgiving party <laughs> celebration where I brought my family and friends together and just really thanked the Lord for 40 years of my life and just being faithful and seeing me through the faith journeys and the mountains that he had enabled me cross the battles and the breakthroughs I had been through from him, you know, just guiding me through it. So it was a dinner and dance party. It was beautiful. And we did a theme called This Is Your Life, where you get your family and friends to come and to talk about your life really from their perspective when they were in your life. And so I had, I had friends, I had family, I had parents, teachers, like various walks of life come and talk about my, the experience, you know, when I was in their life. And that was for me a really transformational moment to hear that really my life had actually been impacting people. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't feel like we're really doing something. Mm -mm. You know, we feel like, oh, I need to do something outside of myself to feel fulfilled. And I began to realize that, no, if you walk with the Lord and be obedient, you will impact those around you because that's how the Lord works. And so that was a real turning point for me. I am, I love that you did that. And I believe that you're going to help others do it because Amen. really most of the time, at least in the Western culture, you mm. know, Western in, the, in this democracy, uh, we don't share about how people have touched our lives or the value that they've brought until we're at a funeral. Mm. And then of course yes. they don't hear it with their human ears. They might hear it, you know, leaning over the balconies of heaven, but they don't hear it. And so you know, we're really to celebrate the living yes. while they're alive. 
Yes. And uh, I don't know, I just see a movement or something that you, you've you sparked, something that is so valuable um, to get people together that, that means something to you and then hear their perspective. Because the enemy Amen. does try to get us to question, does mm -hmm. our life matter? Who are we? Have we done something to make an eternal difference? Or, you know, we all want to be kingdom women. We want to please the yes. Lord, but we don't always see things from others' perspective. Yes, no, I completely agree because, you know, really, you know, Jesus said he's come to give us life yeah. and life in abundance. And really, we should be celebrating life yes. because life in itself is a gift, yeah. you know, from the Lord. And I think really it should be a culture because at the time I remember thinking, you know, if I don't do this now, when is it going to be? And I was like, no, I don't want to wait till much later. Later. let's do it now we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold right. and interestingly after I did my celebration in January of 2020 in March the pandemic hit so a lot of my a lot of my mates who turned 40 did not get to do the type of celebration Aww. that I did so imagine if I had waited Yes. Look at look at that. So that really taught me that no, you must we must celebrate life. Yes. Make the most of it. You don't know what is to come. So yes, I agree that we must celebrate life and you know really thank God for everything that He's seen us through, yes. and just make the most of what He's given to us because we don't know how long we've got it. You're right. And so much of your book, and I love how you say unveiling faith because you use your name, of course, but then you also point back to so many scriptures of faith and yes. they're, they're the stories, you know, from how, you know, Dr. Miles Monroe's book touched you yes. and Dr. Cindy Trim's uh, book touched you in the 40. Yes. And uh, then your friend that was um, going in the hospital and fear gripped her heart because she had, you know, pneumonia, COVID and yes. how she put on your spoken word and how all of a sudden faith came, you know, and yes. there's, it's so uh, beautiful. But um, I want, I want you to share maybe your favorite chapter or your two favorite chapters or your two favorite stories, okay. especially where you are right now, because I know you flow in the prophetic. I love that your brother uh, <sighs> told you, be in a prophetic environment, be yes. in a prophetic anointing. And you said, okay. And then look, the prophecy just comes out of you yes. because you, you you listen, you you have such beautiful spiritual ears. Oh, so share yeah. some special things, one or two, that okay. where you are right now. Okay, sure. So um, the first one, I think you just touched on that in terms of the prophetic. You know, my brother Emmanuel, he's Pastor Emmanuel in London. You know, he really has been so influential because he said that, he said, Faith, you need to be in a prophetic environment. And really that was what I did, you know, and I talked about that in my book because at the time I had just been through like the dark season of the night, you yeah. know, which I shared in my book. And really what the prophetic did was it began to call me out, yeah. you know, of that place of, you know, being down and being despondent. And really, as I began to hear this prophetic words, they were speaking into my future, you know. And for example, one of the prophetic words talks about writing a book. You know, the lady said, you're going to write books that will actually simplify things and help people to understand things in ways that they never did. And, you know, hearing all of that really gave me this injection of hope and life. And that was really how I began to rise up for the Lord again. So the prophetic is really key for me. And then the second one was, I think you just talked about it. It's the spoken words yeah. album that I had, that I started, um, that I did. Again, it's just really the power of the word of God. Yeah. You know, it's like us really understanding who we are in Christ, understanding, you know, the power that has been given to us, that we have a delegated authority from Christ to speak the word. You know, it says like God's word is in his mouth, you know, is as power. God's word in my mouth is as powerful as he as the, the word in his mouth right. as well. So we speak the word of God in boldness. And I have a story here of my friend who was sick. And I don't know if I don't know if you mind me reading that. No. You know, she was sick in hospital and she played the album, you know, and she saw like healing. So I just wanted to actually read that. Do. And then Story. after that, I want you to pray and release the word to anyone sick or anyone that just needs the word of God right now. Okay, sure. 
So this is from my friend Kathy from in Florida. She said, I recently went through a scary time when I ended up in the hospital with COVID-19 pneumonia. I was transported to the hospital via ambulance from an ER center. While en route to the hospital, I kept thinking, am I going to die? Am I that bad that they have to take me in, in an ambulance? By the time I got to the hospital, I was shaking with fear. I was put in a, in a room by myself at the hospital and after being connected to oxygen and plasma was left alone in the room for what seemed like forever. I began to think the situation was hopeless and I thought I was about to die. Eventually, I realized that this was a spiritual battle in my mind and I decided to fight in the spirit with the word of God. I started playing recordings on my phone created by Faith at Piafi Hilsham. I listened to Psalms 91, 23, 34 and 103 and possibly others. I began to gain hope and I would live that I would live and overcome all these things. Each morning at around five o'clock, I would listen to faith speaking out the scriptures and as a result became spiritually and physically stronger each day. I thank the Lord for faith speak the word recording. I overcame my fears and won the victory over this disease. Woohoo! Okay, we'll release faith. Yes. So I just want to speak to anyone out there. You know, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you don't even really know, you know, what your life is about, I want to encourage you that the Lord says that he knows the plans and purpose that he has for your life, plans to give you a hope and a future. I want to speak hope into your life. I want to speak, you know, that the Lord has so much in store for you. And I just declare over you in the name of Jesus to rise up and to shine because your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Be blessed. Amen. You, you, are, you are just beautiful. You just radiate with the love of God. Thank and you. listen, I know many of you watching, you're like, I want more. Please, please don't let the show end. And I agree. But you can go on her website, faithhailsham.com. It's right there. Her resources are there. She has a YouTube channel. She's on Facebook. You can reach her on all kinds of social media platforms. Get her material. Speak the word. Pray for her. Invite her to come speak. Uh, she just brings so much. And listen, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today's the day. It's just as simple is saying, Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all sin. I dedicate my life to you and I follow you for the rest of my life. Come home, come back to the Father. Come home, come back to your true identity. Come back to Him. I'm Jen Mallon. I'll see you next time. Thank you for being part of Come Home.